let's see. I think everybody is here. Is everybody here? Thanks for your patience. Um, okay, well, let's let's just start, and I'll um, and I'll uh, I. I'm not sure exactly who all is here, but that is fine. <laughs> and, um, so I'll just ask you all to, um, these are the artists um, that were made films for this, uh, for this project. Um, if you can, um, maybe we can go around and you can sort of introduce yourself and say what film you worked on. Um, I'll just say your name and then you can do that. And if I hear a big silence, then we'll just not worry about it. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Brent. Why don't you go first? Sure. I'm uh, Brent Watanabe, and I did the first piece of the program, Crest Crown, and it was the um, animated one with the creepy bird in the junkyard. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, and then let's see, Clyde. Is Clyde here? Nope, no Clyde. OK, how about? Uh, Supreet? Supreet here? No, Supreet? OK. Um, how about um, Davida? Davida, are you in the room? Hi there. Hey there. All right. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name's Davida. And what do you want me to say again? Oh, uh, just what film you made. Oh, I, I did a piece called As Yet Untitled of Fire and Water. Right on. Okay, um, DK, you here? Is DK here? Hi. Um, hey. DK, um, I did the excerpt of Resilience, uh, parentheses, sons, parentheses. Awesome, thank you. Um, Wynn, you're here. Hi, my name is Wynn. I did the short untitled video. Nice. Uh, Webb, Web, are you here? Do we have web? Maybe not. Um, how about um, Susan? You're here. I am here. I'm Susan Robb, and I made Seven Sons. Wonderful. Um, how about uh, Coley? Coley, are you in the room? Hi, I'm Coley. Hey. I, the one that had crazy colors and crashed. I think I called it Seven Son of the Eleven Son. Um, uh, Let's see, how about Inye? Inye, are you here? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Hi. My name is uh, Inye, and um, I made uh, Reverie. Right on, thank you. Um, all right, and then Tracy. Tracy, are you here? Yes, hey, this is Tracy, and then new grandma's baskets. Nice. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, it looks like Supreet is here. Let's, let's say hi to Supreet. Uh, or maybe not quite here. <laughs> But uh, all right, uh, well, let's talk to Stefan. Stefan, do you want to introduce yourself and say, um, and talk about your, say what, what film you made? Sure. I'm Stefan. I use they, them pronouns, Stefan Gruber. And I made the last animation piece, Sphere of Influence, along with uh, Bella Lagosi, my, <laughs> my uh, assistant, who is probably watching at the moment. They right are quite fantastic. Right on. Um, I think I think Webb is here now. Webb, do you want to say hi, and say what film you made? Am I right? Hello, Webb. All right. How about Supreet? Supreet, are you here? I am here. My hey. Wi-Fi is so bad. Oh, <laughs> so hi. I'm sorry Hello. if I freeze. But hi. I'm so happy to see all of you. Um, I made the transverse orientation film for the film about the moth and the sun. Right on. Thank you. All right. I think um, I got a message from Clyde. Let's see. Uh, maybe. What does it say? Um, I think I'm getting. Oh. Nope, never mind. <laughs> um, all right, I think, well, maybe Webb, unless you're here, can you say hi? Webb? All right, maybe we'll just move forward with some questions. I thought I would maybe ask, um, uh, I sort of ask a, what a, there's so many of you. I thought um, just asking one question of each of you, we might um, try it that way. So we're not here forever. Um, 
I thought I'd start with with Brent. I, one of the things that's interesting about some of the videos in this project um, is that uh, the artists were using really unusual tools um, or try, and trying out different kinds of technology. And Brent, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the technology that you were using in sure. your video. Sure, yeah, uh, for my video, I actually um, sculpted and animated the whole thing uh, in a VR headset. And that was partly uh, due to, I didn't have a studio at all last year. We were kind of uh, moving from place to place while we had some stuff done on our house. So pretty much all I had was the VR headset and my laptop to work with. Um, so yeah, with that piece, I did it in a small apartment kind of off in the corner. Um, used a Oculus Quest headset, which is like a $300 consumer level headset and a couple of apps on that. And I was pretty excited and um, I pretty excited about how far fairly inexpensive consumer hardware has come along, the possibilities it opens up for a lot of people. Um, and I guess the other thing that I was surprised about when I was working on it was that it was all in virtual space, but it was a surprisingly physical activity. Um, all of the sculpting and stuff, and then most of the animation I did real time uh, as well. So there was a lot of me standing in the corner, like flapping my arms to animate the bird over and over. Um, so it was kind of like puppeteering a lot too, so. Right, you were doing it like in space, right? Like like right. making the shapes in, in the, in the air that then yeah. were in your project. Yeah, it was a very different way for me to work, um, partly because there's no sense of scale. So at any given point, I can zoom the world out and the bird is 30 feet tall and I'm, you know, adjusting the toes and then you go back out to get an overview of it. Um, yeah, it was a really interesting process. That's really cool. Um, thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Coley, I was going to ask you the same question. You were using some interesting technology too. Um, can you talk a little bit about your your um, your homemade <laughs> your homemade editing stuff? Sure, you bet. I've been teaching myself how to code the past few months, which is horrible and wonderful all at once, and um, have been really interested in computer vision and how I can use the computer's built-in camera and like use code to actually tweak the pixels that it's seen and picking up and also create interactive shapes and pieces and like blend videos together in live time. So I did a combination of a whole bunch of just kind of creative coding. Um, and I was interested in doing that with the topic of like solar utopia because I was thinking a lot about the technology of plants and just like how so advanced they are and the wonderful gifts that they have to teach us in terms of like we live in a solar utopia right now so like how can i as this like human try to figure out how to make technology like code more like nature so yeah and i was using uh, javascript uh, primarily in terms of the coding language that's awesome thank you <laughs> thanks for sharing um uh oh um web are you around web are you here i feel like i'm in a seance um i thought maybe web was here but maybe not hello hello web web was here web but muted web can you unmute me oh hey all right sorry no that's probably that's fine um i was gonna ask you if you could talk about your process and how you made your film um, I, it was a little bit of an experiment. I started out with a few different techniques because um, I've been doing a lot of woodwork and kind of enjoying the time travel of finding the layers. You know, just when you're working in wood and you start thinking about how, like each time you cut it, how many years you cut through and the life of a tree. Um, and I wanted to kind of slow that down, um, but it was, on a good day, I made about a second and a half's progress. So I really quickly wow. kind of figured out, okay, if this is gonna be more than 10 seconds, I need to just choose 
uh, a way to do this and and go with it. So uh, what I after a couple of tests with smaller with the small branches, just came up with an incredibly messy process, which was um, sanding up like with the small branches. I would I would cut like a, about an eighth of an inch off and then sand it and um, and then I built a mount for them. So I would do all the messy work outside, bring them into the studio, mount the branches so that they would be in the same position in front of the cameras they had been. Um, so that the lighting and the positioning could stay almost perfect. Take a picture, take the whole thing back outside, do the whole process over again. You were going, oh, wow, I didn't realize that. That's, I mean, it, it makes sense. You don't want sawdust in your on your, on your lens. <laughs> it was, yeah, about 80 pounds of sawdust at the end of it. So, wow. yeah. Wow. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. That's awesome. Um, uh, uh, oh, so another question that I had. Um, uh, for some of the artists, some of the artists were using a text, working with a text, um, and I'm wondering, DK, you were talking, you were working with a text. Um, can you talk a little bit about where the text came from, how you engaged with it in your in your film? Yeah, um, so this was in large part a collaboration with my good friend Paul, um, who I've known for close to maybe 25 years or more, and we've performed quite a bit, so it was more. I guess the development was more as a stage performance. Um, and then uh, Paul is a, quite a thinker, writer, radical, yeah, radical person. Um, and then just through a series of conversations, we talked about like time, the sun being the measure of time, and how right now, especially, it seems like time is, um, uh, the perception of time is really odd for a lot of people. Um, and just kind of want to overlay that experience um, and then using the text that he provided to kind of layer different levels um, to kind of create tension with it, within that. Um, and yeah, just, yeah, I guess that's about it. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Um, um, Susan, I want to ask you the same question. Can you talk about the text that you were using? how that came to be and how you were engaging with it? Yeah, so um, it, uh, I didn't really realize this, um, but when I make stuff, I sing the thing that I'm making, like a little song <laughs> as I'm making it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's just been like part of my practice forever, but like I never really thought about it. It's just like me talking to the thing I'm, making and um, so um, I shared that with um, Andy, the little songs that I was singing and we thought, oh, well, this um, could, this is like, let's make this work in, in the video. So I just wrote out the, the little song that I was singing to the pieces as I made them. That's great, thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's wonderful. Oh, uh, um, Tracy, I'd like to ask you a similar question. Can you talk about the story that you were using in your piece? Sure. Um, first, I want to thank my creative collaborator, Nils Cowan, who uh, couldn't have done this without him. And uh, also to Lemmy Nation, who allowed us to be on the ter their territories during COVID. Um, so. We had to get special permission. And then to um, Miasha Hilaire, Vanessa Tupper, and her daughter Ocean for inviting us into um, Berry Pick and just to spend time with them and to hear their stories. And when we were berry picking, they were talking about how their spirit of their grandmother is really just coming forward and they heard her and saw her and felt her in just every moment. Um, while we were there and that's when the eagles flew over and um, their grandmother Pauline Hilaire that's whose voice we hear mm -hmm. uh, it just felt um, beautiful and right to overlay her actual voice with the story as they were hearing um, her presence you know in every part of that day so um, yeah and Pauline spoke in um, when I was uh, going to school um, 
20 years ago, she spoke in her classroom and she's one of the presenters who always stuck with me. And I've always shared the teachings from, you know, when she presented to us. So it was just, uh, it felt good to bring that full circle, to bring her teachings forward in that way with her family and with their consent. That's awesome. Thank you. That's so, yep. that's such a nice thing to know. <laughs> um, that, yeah, that's a wonderful context. Um, Okie doke. Uh, um, I have another question. Um, some people were, um, there's a family situation going in there. So other people were also um, engaging with family in their films. Um, India, do you want to talk about how your family was part of your film? Uh, yeah. So basically, that was my daughter. <laughs> so, you know, mm -hmm. my kids get to be in my stuff. My family is <laughs> being stuff because they're the people that are close by. And I, I don't have to like call or cast or drive around. So, what was that collaboration like? Uh, I don't know. I kind of told her basically what we were doing. And then we just sort of shot it over the space of like, three months like as we figured stuff out so it just was it was a real organic sort of thing like you know I, I sort of had a story outline in my head and we mm -hmm. just sort of went with it yeah so it was it was it was super casual <laughs> and then she's 13 so she act like she didn't care <laughs> <laughs> right. <That's fair. laughs> right yeah that's great um, thank you. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. th and thank you for sharing your film. Um, uh, oh, um, Stefan, do you want to talk a little bit about how your family history plays into your film? Yeah, sure. So I knew I wanted to make an animated film. I knew I wanted to make a film mm -hmm. about sunlight. And as I was beginning it, I got a tip from my mom, that our family one time had this pretty interesting solar powered company. And so in the 1980s, um, my mom's side of the family, a lot of the people helped run this company called Suncor, which was like the, one of the very early adopters of solar power. And, and the thing that they were doing is making kits that people could build solar powered water heaters with. And they brought these to various schools. And the reason why it could thrive is because we had subsidies for it. Um, the, the, um, the president at the time. The Carter, Carter, Carter. administration. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> it gave subsidies for that. So it could, it could thrive for a little while. And then when the Reagan administration came in, they took away all those subsidies and, um, and that company just had to figure out a way to fold. And, uh, and our, our family took really different turns at that point. And so I took that as kind of like the soul of, of something to, to work with and to imagine a future where programs like that had been able to thrive. And so I went really deep into the future with people living right off of the sun in these fruit satellites. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for sharing that, that's great. Um, um, oh, uh, so let's see, there's, um, there are several artists who were um, from, music was a really big part of their piece. When do you wanna talk a little bit about the music in your piece, what the music? Yeah. about how the music came to be and your way yeah. you incorporated it? Yeah, that music started with lyrics um, that didn't end up being in the film or the video. Um, I, yeah, often lyrics will come. Um, I was thinking with this video, thinking a lot about um, how, what is the emotional transformation gonna be um, from this extractive um, energy process to what I was thinking about as like a receptive collaborative process. And so um, 
the lyrics that were coming to me at first were, um, it's okay to let go, it's okay to receive, it's okay to lose this, um, kind of control, manipulation, socialization. And they, they, they didn't end up making it in it. They didn't feel necessary. Um, and that kind of higher keyboard part kind of took on that voice. Um, yeah, that's how that music came about. Neat. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing your film. Um, uh, I was going to ask Davida a similar question. Davida, you, there's a lot of music has a really big role in your film. Can you talk a little bit about it? In your video? Sure. Um, I would probably, let me turn my camera on. I would probably talk about the, the music and the piece just for as appreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, John, John A. Kendrick um, does one of the vocals there. So she's singing Trouble in My Way. Um, and then um, definitely Mama Nikki. Um, she's the vocalist that closes the piece out. Um, and the song that she's singing is um, actually part of some longstanding work that I've had with Hannah Ben, um, who's a pretty incredible composer and vocalist. And it's an interpolation of a song that Hannah has had. Um, but I would say as a, as a Black artist, I often think about the Black songbook as um, sonically something that I like to tune into. And so kind of moving through those different genres of music um, from Hannah is classically trained and Nikki can sing in many different genres of music, but I would say overwhelmingly Nikki had um, a sense of soulfulness that I was looking for. Um, and being more of someone who works in gallery, like it's, um, it's nice to be in a program with the Northwest Film Forum I'm often more used to doing things for a gallery installation. So hanging out um, more in a screening type space made me really, really appreciate um, the way that music helps to bring me um, moving image along. And I, I do, I wrote the lyrics for the piece at the end, um, along with some inspiration from Hannah and having, having those moments to process what we're living through right now. Cause I realized for me that piece was a lot about um, doing portraits of abolitionists and doing portraits of young people, but also kind of metabolizing the space that we're in. And I couldn't imagine trying to live through this pandemic without having a little bit of sonic release as, as a place to rest on. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, thank you, thank you for sharing. Thanks for sharing your film. <laughs> um, um, all right, I'm, I have a couple more questions. There are a couple more artists. Um, Clyde, I don't know if Clyde is here. I think Clyde is not here. Clyde, it's a little spotty, the Wi-Fi where Clyde is, but um, tell me if, yeah, okay, that, that's confirmed. But Saprit, I think you're here. Is that right? Yes, I'm like kind of okay, in now, but here? I think I'm in right now. Okay, so. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were gonna be able to stick around. Um, uh, and it, so one of the things um, that the the this program was sponsored through um, the one percent for, for Seattle City Light, and so they were like the goal is for these works to have to be about sustainability, and I think we, they've all they've all done that. And you, I was I was going to ask you um, if you could talk a little bit about sort of how you define sustainability and how that comes through in your piece. Yeah. Um... I really like this question. Um, for me, like the work, when I think about sustainability or like really big problems, I often get like overwhelmed. Um, and I don't know, you know, I feel a sort of like, I feel like the way our government and our corporate systems right now are designed are to make individuals feel disempowered. And I feel that disempowerment in my body. Um, and so when I'm thinking about things like environmental sustainability, capitalism, right, white supremacy, imperialism, I just feel like really overwhelmed and sad and fatalistic. I tend to tend, I trend towards fatalism. Um, but then it's like, I go to like the super micro, which is like myself. And it's like, in what ways do these systems live 
inside of me? In what ways am I perpetuating them through the way that I move my body through the world? And so I think in this piece, I'm really thinking about, and in a lot of my work, I'm thinking about futility or embracing futility and temporality um, and failure. Because I think it's like, especially as an artist, um, when you're thinking about archives and ego in your work, you know, it's really hard to kill that in yourself. And so I think for me, it's like the constant reminding of like, my work doesn't matter, you know, like it can, that's not self-deprecating or something. It's like, it like matters and also it doesn't matter. And my life like matters and also, you know, it's like so inconsequential. Um, and in that is like a sort of freedom to take risk. And that's like how like the disease of white supremacy and patriarchy comes from a seeking of permanence and a seeking of originality and a seeking of like self, self-assurance that we, you are extraordinary in, in your own body as yourself. And like, I guess this video is like a reminder to myself of like, none of that is true. None of it needs to be true for my existence to be relevant or important. Um, and so for me, sustainability is like, if we could all like witness and experience the ego death in ourselves, um, I think that would be like a place to move forward to start to think about how we can live better with each other and with the earth. So in that way, that's how I feel like my work relates to sustainability. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I think that that's, that's about it for my, for my prepared questions. Um, it's, we, um, that's, we've done well with time, <laughs> um, um, which I'm really pr proud of, <laughs> but, um, but we could probably talk for another few minutes if anyone had anything that they wanted to share. Um, I can't tell you how um, just like blown away I am by the works that you all made and how um, grateful I am for everything that you've done and um, how just like overjoyed I am to have be able to show these. So, um, um, but, um, but yeah, I think that we're like, that's, we're kind of done. If we, maybe we could have like a group, like a wave or like a, like a, a gallery view. I think I might've messed up the settings. I'm not sure, but maybe that's what we should do. Like do like a group cheer. <laughs> Thank you, Britta, for bringing us all together. Oh, sure. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you, Britta. Thank you. You're welcome. Show us um, a lot of love. <laughs> so cat herding artists during a pan pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little, yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, Rana, can we, is there a way to, to do a, a little like everybody high five? Um, um, <laughs> did I mess it up or can I, do I click on something? You got to give us a cue. Oh, oh, everybody. Okay. It's just yeah. me. All right. So, um, every, what should we do? A just, should we, should we make a sun? <laughs> <laughs> Let's make a sun. Oh, yeah, All right. Ready? Everybody. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining in. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Take thank care. You. Oh, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. There we go. So happy to be bye. in this group. Bye, 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 bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.